Hello once again everybody, welcome back to the Xena 750 Super Duty build. With this nice weather, I hope we are all getting lots of building done and maybe even lots of flying. Well, remember in my last video I said I had a whole bunch of uh, short clips filmed on my memory cards that I'm trying to get rid of? This video will completely get rid of all of the clips on the memory cards, it frees them up, and now I can continue on with the progress of the airplane. So let's get started today with a look at the wings. All right, I thought I'd give you an update on my left wing here. As you know, I replaced this leading edge skin. I have my pitot tube remounted down there. Now I do have to install the bottom rivets yet, and I haven't done that yet because this workbench here is in the way of the rivet gun. I can't get the rivet gun. These are, the rivets are right above here. So I need to slide this wing out a little bit so I can get to these rivets. But other than that, it's all done, uh, except three rivets. You'll notice there's no rivet here, here, or here. And those rivets aren't in there because there are three, actually there's a, a few more than three, but there's a few spots on the wing where below this hole is a bolt. And you can see that because that bolt is there, I cannot insert that rivet all of the way. So I have to cut these rivets down to make them shorter to install these three. So I need to cut three rivets and then I can finish that. Now the way I cut these rivets is I put them in my vise here and I tap out that stem. Well, once I have that stem removed from the rivet, I'll hold it with a pair of pliers and use my cutoff wheel on the Dremel to slice off just a little bit on the end. Now I have a shorter rivet. And the next step is just to clean up that cut. So I take a file and just file the end of that rivet flat and smooth. And then I'll use an X-Acto blade to clean up the hole on the inside. And that just kind of removes the burr from the inside of that hole. And the last step is I'll take a little file and just go around the outside to remove the burr on the outside corner of that, of the bottom of the rivet. Now I have to reinsert the rivet stem. So I use the flat part of the anvil and I'll tap it in. It's a, it can only go so far, of course. Then I'll close the jaws on the vise with just enough room for the stem to go through and I'll finish tapping the stem all the way into the rivet. Well, the stock rivet is on the right side and the one I cut is on the left. And this gives you an idea of how much I cut off. Obviously, I can now install these rivets all the way into the wing. And since I'm just installing three, I'm just using my hand squeezer to install these. Well, I've repeated that process three times and now all of these top rivets are installed. This top skin over the fuel tank is installed and we can come around here and see that I have the ground for the fuel sender. The ground for the tank is connected to the ground and I have this wire here, which is the fuel level sensor. This is what goes on the, the float. That wire comes back through here, out here, and that's this bundle of wire here. That will get connected to the dynon. So the next step is to install this rib here. So I've primed the, this uh, edge here and I've drilled out these three rivets. You guys might remember on a previous video, I said I, when I was riveting all these, I didn't realize there was gonna be a rib here or I didn't realize the rib got riveted here. So I put three rivets in here. So I drilled those out yesterday and now this is ready to go. Now, before I can install that rib, I have to prime it. So I've scuffed it up, I've cleaned it, and I'm just uh, using this primer to get it primed. Now, just as an FYI, I did do this outside. I just sprayed this little bit in my hanger just to get some B-roll footage for you. But once it's done, now we have a nice primed rib ready to install on the wing. Speaking of these self-etching primers, there are two kinds I like to use, the Rust-Oleum and the Duplicolor. This Rust-Oleum is available at Home Depot. Uh, the Duplicolor I've just found at the automotive stores. 
And with both of these primers, I've noticed they both work really well. They both dry quickly. This one's a little bit brighter green than this one. This one here is primed with this. The big difference in these two is their spray pattern. The Rust-Oleum sprays in kind of like a little circle. And this one sprays in more of a fan. And I think I can show you what I mean. All right, I have a test piece here. And the first one I'm going to use is this Rust-Oleum. And you'll notice how it sprays into kind of a dot. Now, if we use our Duplicolor, we'll see how this one sprays. Oops. You can see it kind of sprays in more of a fan. Now, generally with these two different kinds of primers, I like to use the Rust-Oleum if I'm priming small little brackets and things like that. If I have a bigger area, like a rib or something to prime, then I like to use the Duplicolor because of the fan pattern. Now this rib, I did use this primer because it was in my cabinet here. And I actually didn't know that I had a brand new full can of this. So uh, if I would have known I had that, I would have used that one, but I used this one on here. It just takes a little bit more to do because again, you only have that little circular pattern that you're using to, to prime. But this piece is primed and it is now ready to install into the wing. Now, one thing to note with installing this rib is that these two bolts will need to be removed. Zenith does a lot of pre-building of this spar and they will have these bolts installed. So I just removed those bolts and there's another little nose rib like this that gets installed on here. So I just primed that rib. I'm just gonna wait a little bit for it to dry and then um, I can put the, the bolts through the rib and get this all put back together. All right, I now have the little leading edge rib on. This rib is on and I have the bottom here riveted now. So now this wing is in the same stage as this wing, which means technically they are ready to fit to the fuselage. Hey, is that my seats in there? Ooh, I must have seats and interior for the airplane. I'll show you those on the next video. Now with both of these wings completed, they are ready to join to the fuselage. But there's one other little thing I had to do in order to get these wings prepped to mount to the fuselage. And that involves this hole right here. Now you'll notice if I take this 3 8 inch bolt and try to put it through here, it just doesn't go through there. Also keep in mind that if you try to put it through this hole, it won't go through that hole either. Now, you, you know, you'll notice on this side that the bolt will go through those holes easily. And now these bolts will go through these holes. Now all of those holes need opened up a little bit and you may be able to run a 3 8 inch drill bit through it but what I wanted to do is I wanted to ream it instead of using a drill bit. And this is a 3 8 inch reamer that I got on Amazon. I think it was like $9. And if you need one, I'll put the link in the description below. But what I did was I took this reamer and I went through all of these holes. Now I haven't done that one yet, so I will show you how I use this reamer to open that hole. Now, first things first, this is a manual reamer. So what I do is I put it in a 11 32nd socket with my ratchet and I just twist it in the hole with this tool.
Now what that did was remove any powder coating that was in that hole, or if the hole was drilled just slightly small, it opens it up to exactly 3 8 and now that bolt will go right through there. Now it's one of the things you wanna do before you fit the wings, because the last thing you wanna do is have a bunch of people holding your wings up next to the, the fuselage here and trying to get it ready, and then find out that your bolts won't go in to hold it. So all of these now are ready to go. Now it's not really important I get this done right now, I can do this at any time, but I do still have to fit the plastic wing tips to the wings. But there's nothing else I need to do on the wings to, or in order to get them attached to the fuselage. The wing struts are under that workbench there, I can dig those out and start getting those prepped. But like I said, the next step is to get this fiberglass fairing done on the back here. We're gonna do this on Tuesday, so once that's done, I can uh, pop those off, get the fuselage all leveled and uh, secured to the floor, and then I can get a bunch of people together and get these wings rigged. So you're probably aware that the point of attaching the wings now is to get the wing struts cut and drilled and fit and have everything rigged and ready to go, and then all of it comes back off of the airplane again. That will let me get the wing struts painted, it'll let me get the wings painted, it'll let me get the fuselage painted. Once everything's done and it's already been assembled and fit, then it's just a matter of bolting it back together and then it's ready to go. Well, I am looking forward to getting those wings attached to the fuselage. There's a few things I need to do before that, but I think that's coming up fairly soon. So that's it for now. I'm off to work and I'll see you when I get back.